While everyone was talking about electric cars from Tesla, BYD and Toyota, Hyundai made a splash that no one had imagined the Creta EV. Yes, the same Creta you've seen with petrol and diesel engines is now returning in its new electric form. But remember, this won't be an ordinary EV. Imagine a car that offers luxury, saves money and is better for the environment. Would you pass it up? Probably not. According to reports, Hyundai has used the same battery platform that's already been tested in international models, meaning both performance and safety will be top-notch. And that's why everyone in the auto industry is talking about this car right now. But the real question is, what battery technology has Hyundai used in it, and why is this car shaking up the entire EV market? Before continuing with the video, subscribe to the channel to be the first to see major revelations from the automobile world. Before learning about Hyundai's Creta EV, let's take a look at where Hyundai stands in the electric car market today and why it's moving away from petrol and diesel toward electric. Look, Hyundai isn't a new company. It's the brand that gave India's middle class their first family cars, the Santro and the i10. But times have changed. Now, a car doesn't just mean travel, it represents the future. And in this future, electric cars are going to be king. Today, Hyundai is one of the few companies in the world working on electric vehicles at every level, from affordable to luxury. It already has two major electric models, the Hyundai Kona EV and the Ioniq 5, through which it has gained significant experience. Importantly, the Ioniq 5 has established Hyundai as a serious player in EV technology worldwide. It demonstrated that Hyundai doesn't just copy it, innovate. Now the company is preparing to achieve something even bigger by bringing that experience to India and the Creta EV is the first major step in that mission. The question now is, why did Hyundai have to shift from gasoline and diesel engines to electric? The answer is simple, the world is changing. In the past few years, climate change, rising petrol prices and government focus on clean energy have all increased. Countries like the US, those in Europe and China have already decided to ban new petrol engine vehicles in the coming years. This means that companies that don't shift to electric in time will disappear from the market and a major company like Hyundai simply cannot take that risk. The second major reason is technology and trend. Now, users demand not just mileage, but silent driving, fast charging, low maintenance and smart features. Electric cars offer all of these. Hyundai saw how rapidly companies like Tesla and BYD were growing based solely on technology. This made it realize that the future wouldn't be a game about engines, but about batteries and software. That's why it began work on the EGMP, Electric Global Modular Platform, which now forms the backbone of its new EVs. The third reason is India's EV boom. India is the world's third largest automobile market, and the government is promoting EVs through schemes like Fame2, tax relief, and an expanding charging network, all of which present a major opportunity for Hyundai. It knows that whoever wins India's EV market captures Asia's largest market. And one more thing, Hyundai has always been known for its timing. It catches trends, but only when the market is ready. It first conquered the SUV segment with the Creta, and now it's about to repeat history by launching the same brand in an electric avatar. Battery technology, where the game changes. The true strength of any electric car isn't its motor, it's the battery. And this is where Hyundai has made a move that's disrupted the entire EV market. Currently, two main battery technologies are in use. LFP, lithium iron phosphate, and NMC, nickel manganese cobalt. Both have their own advantages and disadvantages. LFP batteries are cheaper, more durable, and resistant to overheating. NMC batteries, on the other hand, offer higher energy density, meaning more power in less space, which increases the vehicle's range. Now, the question arises, which technology did Hyundai adopt for the Creta EV? According to reports, Hyundai has used LG Chem's NMC high-density battery, which has already been tested in the Ionic 5 and Kona EV. This is the same battery known for its performance and safety in many international markets. These cells are not only lightweight, but also quite powerful, meaning the car can run approximately 450 to 500 kilometers on a single full charge. That eliminates daily charging and makes long distance journeys no longer a problem. But the story doesn't end there. Hyundai has focused not only on range, but also on charging speed with the Creta EV. Many people believe the biggest problem with EVs is battery life. However, Hyundai claims the Creta EV's battery can comfortably last 8 to 10 years 
or around 200,000 kilometers. To further build customer confidence, the company plans to offer an eight-year warranty. Don't think Hyundai relies solely on imported batteries either. The company is gradually preparing for local production in India. Reportedly, Hyundai, in collaboration with its South Korean battery partner, LG Energy Solution, is planning to set up an EV battery assembly plant in India. This will reduce battery costs and make vehicles like the Krita EV more affordable. And yes, another interesting feature, the Hyundai Krita EV's battery supports vehicle to load FOIV 2L functionality. This means that if you're on a road trip, you can charge your laptop, coffee machine, or even another electric bike using the car's battery. So it's not just a vehicle, it's a mobile power bank. Because when a mid-range SUV offers a 500 kilometers range, charges in 30 minutes, and runs flawlessly for 10 years, believe me, the game has truly changed. Design and look same identity, new heart. In terms of design, Hyundai has retained the classic Creta look that's always been dear to people. But this time, its heart is completely new. From the outside, it looks like the same familiar crater, but upon closer inspection, you'll notice an electric touch in every corner. Hyundai has thoughtfully made design changes that make it futuristic, yet still preserve its old charm. The story of the battery is not just about technology. It is the story of man's determination and journey to capture energy. Starting from the moment when we first thought of capturing electricity, battery technology has come a long way. Once we saw electricity only in flashes of lightning or thunderstorms, but then came the turning point when humans started thinking, could it be carried with us? It was here that in 1800, Italian scientist Alessandro Volta created an amazing thing, the voltaic pile, made of discs of copper and zinc and pieces of cloth soaked in salt water. This was the first real battery that captured electricity in human hands for the first time. Although it didn't last long, it opened a door. This created a stir in the world of science. Scientists like Humphrey Davy and John Frederick Daniel worked towards making it stronger, more durable, and more stable. In 1836, the Daniel cell, made of sulfuric acid and zinc, was the first to be able to deliver a constant current. But the real revolution came in 1866 when Georges Leclanché of France created the dry cell battery, a battery that used paste instead of liquid.